Hi everyone, this is Trisha Smick, IFBB, Women's Physique Athlete and owner of Body Epic by Trish. I am here today in Wheatbridge, Colorado with a, an, an amazing woman, amazing athlete. Um, she has graciously given me some time to spend with her to learn more about her. We are here at Arm Breast Gym and thank you Dylan for allowing us to tape here. Heather, you know, I've done a lot of research on you and um, really I'm enamored um, by thank you by your 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 history and your track record and and just so honored that you would again take time out of your schedule to um, to meet me with me for 30 minutes. You have I'm honored that you would come. Oh, thank and you. And that you would ask. Oh, truly. thank you. You are my first one, and I'm just so pleased and so excited to be Aww. here with you. So um, we're two weeks away from the Olympia. We are um, the 2019 Olympia and uh this is your sixth one it is yeah so now <laughs> you probably are the, the matron that, that just makes me giggle <laughs> i was two years ago i was like the og um, i know I heard and you it still feels so new uh, honestly every year is it it truly i mean i you know and it's funny i, I think having uh been a part of fitness for a lengthy period of time i, I know you know this like we're accustomed to um, the iconic names that are always in the lineup and you, you have that expectation. But having, I don't want to say become one, but like mm -hmm. six, six times, I mean, there's, you know, there's some repetition there. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's really interesting because I still perceive myself as a rookie. Mm -hmm. I get it. I totally get it. So it's surreal. Yeah. Basically is what it is. Yeah. Well, you know, it takes a team of people to raise a champion, Absolutely. as you know. So, um, and that team starts with your first loves of your life. And um, for me, that was my parents. And I get the feeling that's the same for you. Sure. Um, so I want to, I know both of them were very influential as well as your siblings. But your mom really stands out as someone who had an amazing influence on you, not only from a strong, is beautiful perspective, but also from the perspective of, uh, the mindset and the dedication and the discipline that it takes to become an athlete and a, uh, an achiever on all levels. Could you share with me more about your mom? Absolutely. Uh, my mom was definitely a matriarch. Uh, there were three girls in the house. So when you, know, you look at the camaraderie and maybe sometimes the rivalry between you and your sisters, how did that play out? Um, Renee is 14 months younger than I am, so there was a consistent rivalry there. Mm -hmm. um, Renee is flawless in everything she's, she does and will do in life. She's never gotten a B. She looks like Halle Berry. I mean, she's just stunning. I don't think she, she could have played any sport she wanted to in college. She chose not to. She's double major, graduated tops in her class at Syracuse, <laughs> followed me to New York. I went to Columbia. Now, what about <laughs> the other sister? Uh, well, Adrian is five years younger than me, so she and Renee were very close. Mm -hmm. Um, we're close now, but growing up, she was much younger than I was. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was much closer to my mom. Yes. Um, and my mom was, uh, she set the tone for excellence. Everything was, it, there was an expectation in the household. It, it wasn't as though we were punished or, um, you know, there were parameters in which she's, you know, you're going to do this or you should achieve this. There was no coulda, shoulda, woulda. It was, there was an expectation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and that was for academics and athletics. Mm -hmm. So we look back at your you know, career in athletics and you started at age four with gymnastics. And you know, then you went on to um, play basketball in high school and then ultimately uh, a division one school in New York, uh, Ivy League school, Columbia University. Mm -hmm. So how does um, an early bloomer in terms of athletics, playing basketball and being in gymnastics, go from doing that you know, somebody, you refer to yourself uh, as a tiny, twiggy-legged, nerdy gym rat. Go from that to the Olympia stage. I was. <laughs> I was all of that, <laughs> for sure. Um, years and years and years of trial and error. And a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of reps and a lot of food. Um, I made so many mistakes along the way. And I tell all of my clients, that's what makes me a special coach. Mm -hmm. um, I did not hire many coaches along the way. I chose to make those mistakes on my own for years. 
Um, don't do that, newbie competitors, hire a coach. <laughs> You'll save yourself years and years. Um, but having said that, you know, I learned a lot along the way. Um, so as a gymnast, I was huge. Like, I, I wore a size eight and a half shoe when I was in first grade. Oh my. So, <laughs> But they, they don't really look that big. Yeah, they're nines. But oh, so am I. Yeah, I, and I was pretty much the same size um, that I am, well, without the wife. muscles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in like sixth grade, I was, I was huge. Um, and you know, I was on this track as a gymnast, which I wasn't a very strong gymnast. Um, and I hated it. I absolutely detested it. And every single, I mean, it's, you know, five, six hour commitment a mm -hmm, day. Mm -hmm. I don't know that people are aware of that. Um, gymnastics is still in my mind, the best ground for any type of athletics or any venture into life because of the discipline that it engenders, but it is really rough on the body. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after that, I, I pursued basketball kind of randomly. I was just this super athletic kid and having garnered all this muscle. Um, I was at a dance one night. This is, this is kind of a funny story. Oh, I, I had no them. idea. <laughs> I had no idea how to dance. None. And I, I was by myself. My mom was like, you know, you should spend some time trying to get to know these kids, blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, there were a bunch of boys outside playing 21. I had no idea how to play, what was going on. I jumped into the game and like the, after the first game, once I picked it up, I won the next three. And my mom picks me up. I'm all sweaty from the dance, you know, and she was like, how did it go? And I said, well, I think I'm pretty good at basketball. <laughs> and she was like, what? And I explained to her that I had won, you know, but she, she just kind of looked at me and she was like, well, Heather, basketball's a lot cheaper than gymnastics. And I said, okay, let's do it. So. And that was that? That was that. Uh, so did you kind of just wean out of gymnastics and kind of went full force into oh, basketball? Oh, there were, no, I, I did say there were no parameters. There were parameters around that. So my mom set an expectation of three miles a day 100 push-ups, 200 sit-ups a day. Wow. And um, she's, my mom has always struggled with her weight, and she was adamant about the fact that her kids would never have that issue. Yeah. And so when I say that I struggled with gymnastics, it was, you know, as a kid, you don't want to be told you have to do something. And she always said, as an adult, you'll thank me for this. And there isn't a day that goes by that I'm not like, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you come across as a very um, confident, secure, fierce, strong woman. Thank and you. I, and I don't mean just from a physical standpoint, you know, the muscularity. I'm, I'm talking, you know, from a mentality perspective, too. Which is um, far more important to right, me. Right. Right. So I want to talk to you facade. about, yes, mindset. And what role does that play in, in being an athlete, being an overachiever, and being successful, whatever it's everything. You do? It's everything. I mean, you know, and, and here's the thing. You've been involved with fitness long enough to know that the vast majority of people that get involved in the sport do so in order to, in order to fulfill a void, an emotional void. Mm -hmm. um, and once the exterior is finally polished, the internal never changes. In mm -hmm. fact, sometimes it gets worse. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's really important um, in terms of personal growth, to constantly look within mm -hmm. and to re-examine where you're at, what do you want, mm -hmm. um, how are you going to get there? You know, you're 46, I believe, is that correct? I am. So uh, a little bit of a late bloomer as, as it pertains to this sport. Uh, you started, I think your first competition was in 2006, right? Mm -hmm. As a fitness girl. Um, I figure, think figure. Fig or figure, was it figure? Yeah. Okay. Um, I believe I was reading that um, you became inspired to enter the the fitness figure competition arena when you were working part-time at a fitness club reading Muscle Mag 2000. So after college, um, I had taken a part-time job at a gym and um, I was flipping through this magazine, Muscle Media 2000. Do you remember yes. that? Yes. Um, and I was just immediately just drawn into the science and oh my goodness, there are these compounds that can do this and this. And, you know, so I did my first round of creatine. I think I went and bought uh, phosphagen HP that day. I ended up putting on 12 pounds in two weeks. My vertical went up an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom was like, what are you doing? You know, are you on steroids? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mom, I'm doing creatine. What's creatine? <laughs> she probably wanted some. She did. She did. 
<laughs> um, so, I mean, I was, and I was 22, 21 at the time. I mean, I, it was just fascinating to me. Once I decided that um, I wanted to jump into a show, I had already been dabbling for years. Mm. That show, you won that show, right? The first one. I won my class. Won I your class. lost the overall. Okay. Yeah. But there was an injury that happened about four weeks prior <laughs> to that show. It was funny because, you know, I watch you on stage and I look at your posing and I'm like, I wonder why she does that, you know? But as I found yeah, out. Yeah, my coach calls them gang signs. <laughs> so as I found, found out, um, there was an injury that took place four weeks before your first show, which has stayed with you ever since. Can you tell yeah. us about that? So I was new to the world of cooking. I was a party girl before I decided mm -hmm. to do, to jump in. Actually, I was still a party girl um, into my first and midway through my second prep. Um, and I had never cooked ever, like ever. I would eat, I would open cans of tuna and throw in mustard and vegetables and yes. Oh, yum. <laughs> yeah, and so that was in a Tupperware in the fridge. That was the extent of my cooking knowledge. So when I started to prep, all of a sudden I have a diet. I had no idea how to cook. This is gonna sound ridiculous. I was 33, 34 when I cooked chicken for the first time. Wow. Yeah. First time, I had no idea. Um, anyway, so it was a, it was sweet potato. I had just gotten <laughs> new knives and uh, the J. A. Hinkle's knives, and I had I was holding onto a sweet potato, and I was under the impression that you had to put holes in the sweet potato raw, and I just sliced my finger right off. Oh my, oh my. Okay, so then what was the end result of that? Um, well, I had surgery. They repaired <laughs> it. You know, did it did it literally? off your did your fingers it was hanging oh it was gosh hanging. okay and I, I of course I immediately went to shock and had no idea I drove to the hospital like that actually no I drove to my job because I was like there's no way they're gonna believe this and I show up with my finger dangling wrapped in a towel you know and sweats you know my hair's up uh, you know hey I just cut my finger off just so you know and then I passed out it's a very very delicate surgery and the surgeon forewarned me but being the dumbass that I am. Uh, <laughs> it was, I think, a week after the show, I decided I needed to put on something on my, a glove or something as I was training, and I re-ruptured it oh, immediately, no. and I felt the tendon shrink in. I called my surgeon, and he was just like, okay, you're three surgeries away now. But I just thought it was interesting. You know, I'm like, wonder why she poses like that. Well, it's funny, I've, um, you know, I have a couple of signature poses, and I've seen people emulate um, the thing and it's yeah or when I'm teaching class and you know and they'll mimic the finger thing and I'm like mortified but so that was 2006 fast forward to 2011 junior USA's uh -huh. tell me what happened during that time period yeah I took one year off between 2008 and 2009 I had a friend that passed away mm -hmm. um, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and I moved in with him um, to help him through that time. I did the Arnold Amateur in 2009, did well. Oh, USA's, that was my first well, national that's, show. That's where you termed, oh, 2009, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I won the Emerald Cup in 2010. Um, I took fourth at USA's in 2010. In 2011, I won my pro card. Right. Then um, you were asked after that appearance there, winning your pro card, that was the same year that um, actually physique was introduced, I believe. 2012. Okay. I think you were asked about physique and you said, no, I really uh, spent a lot of time. Yeah. In 2011, yeah. Bob approached me after yes. the show. Uh huh. Yes. So you said, no, no, I really worked really hard to, to kind of get, you know, get on point with my, you know, figure uh, career. And you know what uh, it was that, that, it, that really wasn't it. It was taking the shoes off for me. Oh. It was a huge You like the barrier. heels. <laughs> I'm kind of, so girly I, girl. I get down and dirty in the gym, but I'm kind of girly. And that was, that was a big thing for me. Is it interesting? That yeah. is so interesting. So what did those heels represent for you? I don't know, because they're clear stripper heels. So <laughs> I have no idea looking back. I, I don't know why, you know, that was such a mental block for me. Do you think maybe it, it helped balance off the, the... I don't think it balanced anything. Honestly, I think it was just something I was holding on to because I wasn't uh, totally comfortable with the idea of posing barefoot. I don't, I don't know why, to be honest with you. Maybe I equated it with women's bodybuilding, and at that time mm -hmm. I just didn't have the level of appreciation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I hear from some figure competitors that their decision not to move up had to do with 
the uh, their fear about you know having to present a routine and the choreography of no. all that. So that had nothing to do with no, it. No, no, no. I yeah. love the stage. You do. Yeah. I don't. I mean, I get on stage and wing it. I don't even have a routine. Really? Ever. ever. Well, that's amazing. It's fun. I mean, that's my background. You wow. know, so I'm a wow. performer. That's amazing. And that's, I, no, I love the stage. Good for you, because I get stage fright. Do you? Yeah, so I have to over-prepare everything. It has to be so over-prepared to nauseam yeah. in order for me to actually be able to step on stage and say, you know what, even if I choke, my body will move because I've done it so much. Okay. That's kind of where I need yeah, to Yeah, I have you. clients that are in Do that you? space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not a very fun space, but I continue to torture myself. I'm not quite sure why, but I do. Well, I will say, I have not yet, but I will be choreographing a routine for the Olympia just awesome. because we're on the main stage. So, oh, yeah. So when will you start that? It's only two weeks away. Today. Today? <laughs> Talking about planning things far out in advance. I told you I'm a fly by the seat of my <laughs> pants kind of girl. That's funny. So, all right, going to your first pro year, your pro debut um, in figure was 2012, right? 2011. 2011. Yeah, I jumped right the next week. I did the California Pro. Okay. All right. And then again, you like, so I'm coming from Armbrust Pro Gym, right. where Heather May French trains, Camilo Rodriguez trains, Sarah Hurley trains. Like, I, I mean, I competed with these. I, I saw them day to day. Yes. And so in my mind, I thought, I can do this now. Like, I don't need to add any size. You know, let's mm -hmm. let's find out where I stand. Good. So how did that work out? Um, I freaked out when I got on stage and overposed. Overpose. What does that mean? Um, I just lifted too high, and uh, you know that was a different era in figure, which um, at that time it was far more natural. You just kind of stood on stage, mm -hmm. um, and I was already considered hyper muscular at the time, mm -hmm. and told to be careful um, and to not grow anymore. And I think my final figure show, or the best that I ever did, was like six, the Tournament of Champions, and that week I had cheesecake and ice cream and cookies and just to soften up and I ended up taking sixth or seventh and I just wasn't happy with that look. So um, th is that what prompted the move to your first uh, physique pro show in 2012? Well, that, was that the Tampa so pro? I was, I was watching, no, no, I was watching um, physique as it progressed. You know, I'm thinking, you know, figure isn't going well for me. I wasn't happy with the fact that I was told not to add it size mm -hmm. or that I was fighting my own physiology in not uh, being able to come in as lean as I prefer to be yeah. the, the look that I like at that time um, I wasn't uh, I wasn't I, there was no way I was gonna fit the mold of figure and I, I didn't really want to mm -hmm. I, at that time I had uh, taken time off and I just thought I'm gonna make a run at this I'm gonna add some size and I'm gonna start to train and it was the first time since I had really gotten involved in the sport that I went all out with training and food and just had so much fun. I fell Did back you? in love with it. Is that when Dylan entered the picture? Yeah, so that I made the decision to make an attempt at physique in September. It was actually the weekend of the Olympia. Oh, wow. And I thought, well, if they can do it, I can do it, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. So I asked uh, Dylan to start training with me in January. Of what year? Um, what year was that? 2014. Okay. Um, I hired Shelby in uh, February, and um, I did my first show in July, which was kind of a shock. Like, I really thought it would take a couple was of years. Was that the Tampa Pro? No, that was uh, San Jose was my, San oh, Jose yes. was my first show. Yes. yes. So yes. I took third. So in 2014, I think that was a special year for you. Oh. Yeah, it was my breakout year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at the Tampa Pro, right? The Tampa Pro yes. was my first win. Well, yeah. yeah. So you had your Olympia qualification. What on earth did that feel like? It's still, um, I think about that moment all the time because it was like the pinnacle, all of this hard work. And, you know, I went into physique with absolutely no expectations. Like I had rekindled my love of the sport. I was training hard. I was having fun. Um, I love being on stage. I loved being able to present. Um, I knew that I still needed size. I was mm -hmm. tiny. Mm -hmm. um, but from a conditioning standpoint, I was definitely the leanest on stage. Mm -hmm. It was a different look that I was bringing because I was so lean. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody had consistently displayed striated glutes at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's funny, in Tampa, I ran into Sandy in the elevator uh, the day, the morning of the show. 
and she was like, Heather, I'm so happy that I get the chance to talk to you. And she said, I love your look, but I cannot have striated glutes on stage. Wow. I, we, this cannot become bodybuilding. I need to preserve this division. And I know that for you, it happens easily and genetically you, you striate. And she said, do whatever you can to fill in and to not strike on this stage. Wow. Yeah. Which Talk meant about so much to me sure. that she would take the time to have that conversation with me and also acknowledge the fact that it's kind of something that just happens with me. It's, it's not, you know, that I have to push that hard. Right. You know, I, I have to push hard to get striations in my quads, um, but my glutes are strided year round. But, you know, again, that was a different era yeah. in the sport. Things have changed. It has and, changed. Yes, drastically. And now it's like if your glutes aren't striated four weeks out of a show, you better rethink your show. Absolutely. And yeah. So <clears throat> what was it like going into that Olympia for the first time? And oh. just like what was, first of all, was the prep what you expected it to be? So the prep was rough because, you know, I was six weeks out of the Olympia when I won Tampa. You know, so it's it's difficult when you're, you know, I think I had started prep in like April-ish mm -hmm. or something like that. I mean, that's a long time sure. to be in prep. Mm -hmm. And I definitely missed the mark at that show Did in you? a lot of ways. Yeah. But having said that, the experience itself was just amazing, you know, to be on that stage mm -hmm. and to have been involved in the sport as long as I have. Um, and I think oftentimes the newer competitors don't have the sense of legacy and the history and Although I got involved in the sport in my, you know, like 33-ish, 34, I had followed it closely from that moment that I opened that magazine when I was 22. Um, so I, I've been a fan of the sport for a very, very long time. And to step on that stage meant everything for me. How did you feel backstage as you're getting ready to go on? Uh, you know, it was kind of a blur. It was, um, there was just so much going on and so much to take in. Mm -hmm. um, the second year was much, I enjoyed it far more mm -hmm. because I was just so overwhelmed that first year, which is interesting for me because I've, uh, I've done well as an athlete in every sport that I've taken part in. I don't know that I've reached, you know, Olympia caliber, mm -hmm. but I did play pro ball. Right. So you know, I'm accustomed to performing and to uh, to coming through as an athlete. Um, but also part of it was probably that I knew I wasn't at my best. Mm -hmm. um, so it's- That's a horrible feeling, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's not a good feeling. Well, you know what your best is. You yeah. Know, it's all about bringing your best self regardless of the results, right? Right. So if you brought your best self and the results were what they were well well and here we are on the olympia stage and i'm yes. not at my best right you know? right yeah. so that was you know it was it wasn't easy the mm -hmm. second year was much better good so five years so far with olympia uh under your belt uh three of those in the top five um last year was fifth i believe and then yeah. third third so Last year was another one of those really off years. How does the landscape of competitors affect you and what you do and how you do it, or doesn't it? It doesn't. All? Yeah, you're just doing your thing. It doesn't. This isn't, you know, and I have this conversation with people all the time. This isn't a team sport. Yeah. It isn't. Mm -hmm. And it's about progressing year to year, and that has everything to do with your evaluation, your work ethic, mm -hmm. and your plan. Mm -hmm. um, and they all have to be in place. I, I really don't care what XYZ competitor looks like six weeks out of a show, yeah. two weeks out of a show. I don't even care what they look like the day before the show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now the morning of the show, yeah, but I'll see you backstage. <laughs> so you brought up your business. Is it uh, Rare Four M? Is that what it is? Yeah, Rare yeah. Form. So where? Did, oh, Rare Form. Mm -hmm. Where did you get the name from? Uh, you know, uh, this was something I concocted back in that era when I opened that magazine. Really? Yeah. Originally, I wanted to kind of be um, a life coach. Mm. I thought that was kind of where I, I saw myself going. I see that. Going. Thanks. Oh, yeah. You're, you're pretty deep. Thanks. I can totally see that. Um, so I've, I've had some interesting jobs. Um, at one point, I was buying at Nordstrom. I was a buyer for Savvy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so fashion was everything for me. And it's funny in that uh, when I decided to go all in in fitness, I completely left all of that behind. Um, 
I mean, I was, I was just as immersed in retail as I was. Yeah. So you find yourself in that black or white mentality with a lot of things as Everything. well. Everything. Yeah. So I'm not a great girl. Yeah, me That's neither. the Aries thing. <laughs> well, I'm a Pisces and I'm not a great girl either. No? <laughs> no, I'm not. That's interesting. I'm, I thought Pisces I'm were. I'm black and white. Yeah. When I go hard, I go I just, hard. I don't process half-ass yeah. in any way, shape or form. And when I, I don't understand, I, I try to be empathetic. I'm an empath, but I just don't that doesn't resonate with me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at all. And I have no problem with people that make the decision to not go in. You've made a decision, good for you. Mm -hmm. What I don't understand is tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm gonna start Monday. Yes. Like, what? When, when I make a decision to do something, we're, we're, we're starting now. Yes. yes, now. Getting it done. Yeah. So talk to me about the difference between being a gym rat and a gym unicorn. Huh. <laughs> Semantics. Okay. Um, <laughs> semantics. Yeah, same thing. Um, so I wasn't I, sure if, because I've heard you refer to yourself as a gym rat and then other times as a gym unicorn. Wasn't really sure if there was a difference. There is a difference. I think, I think someone that shows up at the gym consistently day in and day out is a gym rat. I think somebody that shows up with intention is a unicorn. Ah, well, talk to me a little bit about a disease that you fought in your early 20s that you overcame. Mm -hmm. So I think it's tied to that type of personality that we have, yep. bulimia. So I too suffered from that and uh, overcame it on my own. How Can many do you think, how, what's the percentage? Of women? Fitness, yeah. I would think probably a lot more than. What would you guess? 75% maybe? At least. Yeah. I would say at least. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting and I don't think it's a topic that's explored enough. I was still a functioning athlete. So at the time I was running five miles a day. I was playing ball with the guys. I was waiting, you know, because at that time they were talking about the, the inception of the WNBA. Mm -hmm. So I kind of held on to that, gotcha. you know, like, well, maybe this is going to be mm -hmm. something I can do. And these girls are big and strong. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was training hard. I just wasn't eating. And then when I did eat, I would, you Absolutely. know, um, I, I just, I had no idea how to control it. I um, was dabbling in some athletic modeling at the time I was getting involved in retail. Uh, I was dating a very well-known guy who uh, his mom actually uh, had an intervention with me. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was an interesting time. I just wasn't ready to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. But when you were ready to deal with it, how did you deal with it? Just like anything else, I made the just decision. to stop. That's yeah. what I did too, actually. Did you? Yeah, just stopped. So to what was the impetus for you? To start or to stop? To stop. I just felt like um, it ruled my life. It was the guilt for me. Yeah. It was the guilt. Because I knew that I was decimating my body. And yet everything that I did was about health and longevity it has been for a very mm -hmm. very very mm -hmm. long time I just was unaware of it mm -hmm. then right um, but I just felt this overwhelming sense of guilt when I would do it Interesting. and also this is gonna sound I felt like I was disappointing my mom Aww. did she know yeah my mom struggled with anorexia and bulimia did too she? yeah so yeah I felt like I was letting her down mm. Mm -hmm. how long were you uh, knee-deep in the bulimia I think I started dabbling in high school and I was 23, 24 mm -hmm. when I stopped. It's mm -hmm. a long time. Well, Still and quite frankly, you know, anytime, and I, I don't gore in, you know, gorge as much as I used to after a show, but the impetus is always there. It's always in the back of my mind. See, now I do usually end up getting sick, but not because I'm, because I want to but it's because I've eaten so much that my body is, re it's fighting against it. Oh dear God, I can put it down. <laughs> I can eat, <laughs> Ooh, I can eat. Yeah, it's, uh, I have friends that fly out to Vegas just to watch the post-show festivities. Oh, well. Tell me sushi. Oh, the, well that ends up being on, the, I have a list. So it's cornbread, it's biscuits. Uh, I'm a huge like lemon bar, um, 
I love blueberry bars. Oh, yeah. I love oatmeal raisin cookies. I every year I special order uh, cookies from the Levain Bakery in New York. Are you familiar uh, I'm with not, the Levain? But I already know what I'm going to tell you, talk to you about. And see. So <laughs> I, I actually made trips to New. I'm a huge cookie gal. Um, oatmeal raisin. I am. I've made trips to New York just to go to the Levain Bakery. Wow. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So is that you went there a lot when you lived in New York? Um, or you no, I no? Just, <laughs> I discovered the Levain Bakery actually through a friend. Oh wow! Yeah, and so here you were, like probably like within driving distance at the time. Probably, yeah, because yeah. there's one in Harlem. Yeah, yeah. Wow. There's. Actually, a, I don't know if they were. Yeah, they probably were around then. Have you ever seen on Instagram the Cleveland Brownie Company uh, oh. ads for these amazing brownies? I brought. Are them they with, like specialty? Uh, yes. Super huge. Yes, and, yeah. and gooey and all kinds of yeah. yummy stuff on top. What is it? The Cleveland Cleveland what? Brownie Company. I'll okay. send you a link. But anyway, I brought. Well, Tim actually uh, brought uh, six of them to. Nice. Was a Puerto Rico Pro, or one of those shows, mm -hmm. and so we brought it to an ice cream shop. And we had to put on a plate. <laughs> we well asked done. them to warm them up. Yeah. And then pile some ice cream on top with <laughs> peanut butter and chocolate sauce. Good for you. Yeah. So yeah. I get it. I totally get the cravings. So got to ask about love. I get the feeling that a meek, shy, timid guy is not going to go over very well no. with you. No. So, so no. what's I, what's the guy? What, what's his what's his rundown? That I, I don't, don't have one right now. No. No. And it's, it's been some time. Um, the last serious guy um, was a former, former athlete in college, did really well. Um, he was into pharmaceutical sales. Um, he was long distance. They're, they all seem to be long distance. Um, great guy. It just didn't work out. No. Yeah. It's, it's been difficult um, in that I feel like I resonate most with athletes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't mean bodybuilders. I've never right. dated a bodybuilder. Um, because in my mind they understand the struggle and they understand the importance of training because um, that's not something I'm going to explain mm -hmm. um, and there, you know there's also the common the common ground with the lifestyle absolutely I think that's important I I have no desire to date a bodybuilder yeah me neither yeah I need more <laughs> and I, I'm so immersed in this world you know with my business that in my personal life I would rather discuss other things sure so Absolutely. but it, it's been problematic in that um, in the past most men have tried to compete with me you know it becomes a you can do this kind of a thing I can do this too or they try to adopt the lifestyle which they don't understand the reason that we're in the space that we are is because sure. they're not a part of this space right so it's it's difficult I bet I bet so um, any prospects in terms of, I don't know. There's always prospects. Yeah. There's so always prospects. Do you get out enough to find prospects? No. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't have time to get out. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I barely have time to cook and sleep. Like, my schedule is, it's, it's pretty demanding. It would have to take a special guy to break into that circle. It would take a special guy to break into my world, for yeah, sure, absolutely. no matter what. I'm not of the mindset that I'm looking for mediocrity ever in anything that I do. Yeah, I got that sense. Yeah, and I, I will say that about anyone in my life. Yeah. They're all, and I attract these amazing people. Like, I'm truly blessed. And I'm not talking about just my friends. Um, my clients are amazing in terms of attraction because, you know, we all attract certain qualities. Um, I tend to attract dynamic type A's, um, go-getters. They're super successful at what they do, mm -hmm. usually or in some area of life. Mm -hmm. um, very rarely do I get somebody that doesn't understand um, work. Okay. And I'm very upfront um, when I sit down with someone mm -hmm. and we go through the consultation yes. that I am not a hand holder. Yeah. I'm not gonna motivate you. Like That's not my job. My job is to coach you gotcha. and to make you proficient and better at whatever it is we're, we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. It's been a really awesome year for my clients. There was uh, a conversation that you had, an interview that you had with Mandis Buckle a while uh -huh. ago, and it was, I think it was either following or preceding one of your uh, appearances on the stage. And he had said to you that, that people, meaning judges or critics of the sport or what have you, had commented in the past that 
you didn't have the most, that you weren't genetically blessed with the best structure or frame for the sport. How did you feel about that? And what do you think he's talking about? I don't really remember that, to yeah. be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Um, so I will say that my legs have always been problematic mm -hmm. because of so many nagging issues and injuries and over the years, I mean, I, I've ruptured an Achilles. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know how many times I've sprained my right ankle, you know? Um, so my legs were always an issue until this year. Um, and I discovered NuFit. Are you familiar with NuFit? I've heard you talk about it. Everyone Please. thinks it's a stim device. Right, it's similar. It isn't. To, similar though? Not no. even close. No. This mm -hmm. is a DC current-based mm -hmm. machine. So what it's doing is reteaching your neurolog your neurological pattern. So not reteaching, revamping. Mm -hmm. So we're react we're activating dormant muscle tissue. Wow. And it is absolutely phenomenal. Like for the first time in my life, I feel fibers that I've never felt. I mean, I I can squat 315, no worries, but I didn't feel anything. Wow. I can put up all kinds of weight, but I didn't feel anything. And now, now I you do. Feel it. Now I do. Wow. And I'm doing it without the aches and the pains in my knee. Wow. Like I was pretty sure I'd have to have surgery um, after this Olympia and I'm good. You're good. Yeah. And your it's, legs have come up? Yeah, I, yeah. That's awesome. That's <laughs> yeah, awesome. I don't think they're a weak point anymore. Awesome. They're, I mean, they're not as strong as my back, but right. yeah. That's great. Can't wait to see you on it's stage. It's been a game changer. Really? Yeah, for so sure. People, people are going to be surprised then, this Olympia. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So we'll be there, too. Oh, good. Yeah, we're going. It's my good. fun. Is so, it? Yeah. Oh, wow. There was um, a, an event that you were attending. It was the 2017, I think, Meet the Olympians and mm -hmm. you had a table set up and you had some pictures and uh -huh. and there was a, a young, she appeared to be a young girl. That the you Australian. Were that you were talking to and you were leaning over the table and you were kind of leaning into her and you were talking to her like so emphatically. Yeah, I don't know how that ended up getting released. I think someone was videoing the conversation it, it, because she and I were talking and then I saw a, a, t a recording of that. Yes. Yeah. What were you talking about? It seemed, Honestly, it seemed I, really deep. I, I mean, don't recall what she asked me. I think she was asking me about mindset. I kind of got that feeling because like you were really kind of getting into the whole mentality of yeah. the sport. So if you aren't coming from an athletic background and, and many women are not that get involved in fitness, um, I don't think it, it's tough to develop the mindset of, like I don't go into a show to participate. Mm -hmm. I'm not going into a show because my legs have come up. I'm going into a show to win, always, always. Like there isn't another option. And that comes from my athletic background. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not a competition, that's, 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 I mean, it is a competition, but it, it's not as though I have, you know, I'm gunning for anybody in particular. Right. That's not it, it's, but it's always of the mindset to win and I've always, approached everything in that manner um, or you know to improve upon what I've done in the past mm -hmm. that's awesome it really is Thanks. and with that said I just want to thank you again so much and I truly wish the best for you on stage in a couple weeks thank you and um, sitting down with you has been truly my pleasure thank you it's thank really you. been an honor thank you Cut. all right